besides the CNC machine and the computer programs, stuff that go with the machine itself, what other equipment and tools do you need to produce a great project? I'm gonna say first off, my favorite one is these. These are the 3M Bluetooth uh, headphones. I wear them all the time when I'm in the shop. I wear them when I'm mowing. I, I love them because you can Bluetooth your phone to them and you can listen to music the whole time. You guys don't ever hardly see me in them, but the whole time the machine's running, I'm listening to music. It's a loud machine. So I'm gonna say probably next up would be saws. There's several kinds of saws and no one is perfect for any project and you can take your pick. You can choose amongst many. First off, I'm gonna say the table saw, which you can see this is a little bit larger one. It's kind of the shop version. <laughs> the things that are gonna prohibit you from doing this kind of thing is cost. I mean, the cost of a good table saw is up there but whenever you're cutting down large pieces of wood, invaluable. When cutting down stands of wood, like this piece of oak, and I'm gonna glue it all up, the miter saw, you just can't replace it. Love my miter saw. A circular saw will do the job of many other saws. I mean, it can replace the table saw. You don't necessarily have to have a table saw to cut stuff down. I often use the circular saw whenever I'm cutting down the larger pieces of plywood before I go to the table saw. And then of course the jigsaw. I use this tool just about every project that I'm cutting something out. Whenever I'm, when I have the tabs that go around the edge of it, this is what I use to break those tabs apart, makes a nice clean cut. I use it in other ways as well, and I'll probably show you part of that next week because I'm gonna do it on next week's video. Uh, I'm gonna cut out the project with this as opposed to letting the CNC machine do all the outside rim because it takes so long. Kind of like saws, I have several sanders. Uh, a good sander, the random orbital sander that I use on 98% of my projects, I mean, that's basically what I use all the time. I have others, have a belt sander, that's for taking off a lot of uh, material quickly. I've got an oscillating sander, I'll go over here and show you. This is an oscillating sander. As you can see, you turn it on, the spindle goes up and down as you're moving wood around the side of it. Basically, I use that to sand down the edges of things. I also have a pro, uh, profile sander. What a profile sander does, it basically is just a vibrating sander that you can put little different shapes. You can see I've got a whole bunch of them there. And you just put the salt sandpaper around it. It just sticks to it. And it's for getting in crevices and around weird edges. Again, the profile sander is not something I use a great deal. Uh, setting it up and getting it to go into the little crevices takes longer than me just folding up a piece of sandpaper and doing it by hand. But like I said, the go-to is a random orbital. Get you a good random orbital. It will take care of you if you take care of it. The next tool I'll talk about is my planer, my thickness planer. That thing has saved me numerous times. I absolutely love it because whenever you're doing CNC stuff, you want a perfectly smooth surface. So this is a 13 inch thickness planer. Y'all have seen me run stuff through this before. This isn't something that's necessary. You don't have to have this to do CNC. In fact, if you've got a CNC machine, they make a spool board bit. I actually don't have a spool board bit. A spool board bit is a round flat bit. This is just a roll of electrical tape, but just to give you some visualization. It's a round flat bit that'll have a little point in the middle, just a very small one. And then it'll have a couple of flutes on it, maybe three, maybe four. It's got, they make, they make them with several flutes. What it's for is for the table itself. When you cut through a piece of wood and you go around the outside edge of it, if you don't put wood underneath it, it'll cut into your table. It'll cut into the top, the spool board. So what that bit is for is for smoothing that back out and getting all the ruts and grooves out of it. I don't have one because whenever I use my machine, I put extra scrap wood up underneath the board before I do a cutout. That way I don't have to worry about tearing up the table. 
Point being, a spool board bit, if you would put that on your table, put your piece of wood up on the table, even if it's unlevel, the piece of wood you're using, say it was rough, rough cedar like I have, you put it on the table, this board bit will sit there and go back and forth across it and make it perfectly smooth, much like a planer. Takes longer, but it would be a lot cheaper than buying a very expensive thickness planer. The next one here is not necessary. You have seen me, and I've talked about it tons of times. It's my Iwata airbrush, the Iwata Revolution. This is not an assessment a necessity. It's not necessary for you to have. When I started all this, if a lot of you followed me that long, I was doing everything by hand. I was paint brushing stuff. The airbrush saves so much time. It's so clean and it's so much easier to sand off whenever you're done. When I'm painting, I get asked this one almost every video. I use CreateX airbrush paint. I use the opaque. That way it makes it nice, thick, or, or appears to be a thick covering of paint. You can't see through it. It coats well. And the main reason I use it is because this is the Hobby Lobby brand. We have a Hobby Lobby 25 minutes to the northeast of us, and we have one about 30 minutes to the south of us. I just use what's handy. Before I go into painting, I don't always pre-coat the wood with anything. I get asked that a lot. When I do, I use sanding sealer. This is just a sanding sealer you can get at your paint store. They may sell it at Walmart, I'm not sure. Or I use a spray polyurethane. Now, the spray polyurethane does not work as well as the sanding sealer. However, in a pinch, I do this because the sanding sealer takes much longer to cure. If you remember, I don't know, two or three videos back, I had used sanding sealer on a piece of wood and it gummed up like eight of my disc, and it was just doing it over and over. And that's because I didn't wait long enough for that to cure well. It had been sitting for 24 hours, but we are in a very humid climate. It may take two or three days for it to dry. So generally, whenever I'm starting to do a project, I'm not thinking three, four days in advance. I'm only thinking a day out or two days out about what I'm gonna do, and oh, I need to glue this up. Oh, I need to coat this with something. So I'm not usually that, that prepared. But just as a rule, the sanding sealer works much better than the polyurethane, but the polyurethane works decent in a pinch. So with that preparation, a lot of times I have to get out here and glue wood up. That generally is done overnight or at most 24 hours. It glues, it sets up. Right now I'm using Gorilla Glue, wood glue. You saw my big thing of Elmer's glue that I had in here for a long time that got messed up when it got below zero this last winter. Uh, I just didn't think to take it inside, but I lost a lot of stuff out here, a lot of paint, a lot of glue, stuff like that. But at all honesty, whenever I glue something up, they do, you can do a technique using a biscuit joiner, which is what this is. So whenever you push up against the wood, you can see the blade pop out. It spins, it cuts a little groove into the wood, and you use these little football shaped pieces of wood and you slide it, you glue it in there, and you put the pieces of wood together. And then once it dries up, glues, you've got a nice solid joint. I don't generally do that on signs. It's not something that's going to be structural. It's not going to be holding weight. So it's going to be something hanging on the wall. I just make sure I have good edges on my wood, run glue down it, smush them up together, put clamps on them overnight, and they're glued up. Usually, I will try to... <laughs> not make them wider than the 13 inch planer I have. That way once I glue them up, if they're a little uneven, I can just zip them through there. The last week one where I messed up the ear tag, that was 18 inches. Well, by the way I did that one is I put half of it through, I glued it up in two halves, I, I lie. I glued it all up and then thought, oh man, I can't plane this. And so I cut it back in half. And I ran through one half through, and then I ran the other half through. Then I re-glued it back up, came out perfectly smooth. So, I mean, there's a million ways to get your wood in the proper condition for CNC. You could even sand it if you're willing to spend that much time sanding. I'm not. I'm very impatient when it comes to that kind of stuff. All this stuff was either given to me by my dad, who was by trade a carpenter, a taught carpentry, 
or I've bought it and I've done it all the way before we ever started doing the CNC thing. So when I got to the CNC side of it, that's all I had to worry about putting money into. I didn't have to worry about buying a bunch of extra tools. The whole point being, just get started with whatever you got just so you can get going. I mean, honestly, a jigsaw, and let's just, let's dumb it way down. A handsaw and sanding paper. So if you got the machine, that'll get you started. It's gonna be a lot more work. All this other stuff's just a luxury. And I was just fortunate to already have started accumulating all this stuff before I even thought about doing CNC. The reason all this got brought up is I get asked every week, a lot of them very repetitive questions, and I try to answer them, and I don't always get to them. But number one on the list is what kind of paint do you use, which we covered. Number two is how do I seal the wood, covered that. The rest of it, I do get asked questions about some of the tools I'm using. I just figured I would cover them in length today. And like I said before, I'll have, uh, next week is gonna be another CNC. I've already got the project lined up. I don't have it all programmed yet, but the reason I didn't do it for this video is it's gonna be a two piece thing. Well, it's actually gonna be a 13 piece thing, but you're gonna see two of the pieces because 12 of them look exactly the same. So guys, that's gonna be it for this week. If y'all haven't done so yet, please subscribe and I'll see y'all next time.